Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. I hope all is well with each and every one of us. I'm making my way through. I just got my pamphlet up, up and running. But I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation. I am what I am by the grace of God. We all know the things for today, the will of God. So as I stand before you, I want to begin this with a quote. The will is the way, and the way is the word. The will of God is the way of God, and the way of God is the word of God. The will of God is a divine combination of his character, his creation, and his promise. In his character, there is everlasting love. In his creation, there is newness from things never existed. And in his promise, there is eternity with the fullness of joy, with peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. His grace is truly sufficient. Yes. Oh Here I am, Lord, send me. Amen. I'm going to try to condense my notes due to my allotted time that has been given for me to share with you on today what God has deposited in my spirit. I will convey this message associated with the theme, God's will. My intent is to bring forth encouragement, clarity, and understanding in the infallible will of God. The title for this message is in the form of a question. Are things in order? As I began preparing this message, after the burial of my oldest son, this question dropped in my mind. This question was extremely emotion because I just buried my firstborn. The question was, are things in order? Although this was a vague question, allow your mind to gravitate towards the areas in life that needs order according to the will of God. Not understanding the details of this question, I replayed the challenges I faced with my son. After deleting all the what ifs, thoughts of things, others, and reality of what, to, what took place, I knew what God was showing me. Yes, sir. Sometimes the will of God leads to suffering, yeah. according to the Apostle Peter, 1 Peter 3 and 17. Yes, sir. Suffering is not a bad thing when you are in his will. Wow. Be real and ask yourself, are things in order? In the year of manifestation, which is nothing new under the sun, and the will of God must be done, we often use this term, very gentle and redundant, but let's define the single word of this term, which is will. will. A will is used to express desire, choice, willingness, consent, and in a negative construction, refusal. The now perspective of the definition is where I draw my pretext. A will is always, a, a will also is a legal declaration of a person person wishes regarding the, dis the disposal of his or her property uh -huh. or estates after death. Right. It is considered a legal document if prepared correctly that communicates a person's final wishes uh -huh. pertaining to their assets. Uh -huh. it, pro it provides specific instructions uh -huh. about what to do with their possessions. Uh -huh. Now let's focus on the noun perspective of the definition because it fits the theme where I'm going. Yes, sir. We all know a noun is a person, place, or a thing. Uh -huh. God was a person, Jesus. God is in every place, omnipresent, and God is in everything, omniscient. The will of God is similar to a living will. It is the living word, and we serve a living God. God's will is a masterpiece. Lord, I love you. Now let's dig into the text. Turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 16 through 20. I'm not going to touch on every verse, but... Those are the verses that I use to collaborate with where I'm going. In the book of Hebrews, we find an unknown author who believes, who many believe the author is Apostle Paul or an associate such as Luke or Timothy. Right. In this book called Hebrews, we find language concerning the people of God. However, there is no specific church these people are affiliated with, such as the Church of Corinth, the Church of Thessalonians, and etc. You get where I'm going, the time is of the essence. It appears the author speaks directly to the people. Right, right. Directly to the people. We all know this. We we all know the significance of the Hebrew generation, starting with Abraham, father of many, who was a Hebrew and willing to sacrifice his son Isaac. Thank you, Lord. Moses was also a Hebrew. I'm just speaking Bible. That's all. I'm just speaking Bible. In order to grasp the uh, the author's intent, we must understand the author, even though we don't know who the full. Even though we are not certain who the author is of this epistle, the letter reveals a special acquaintance with those whom he is writing and is familiar with the persecution right. which they are enduring. Right. So in chapter 9, the author explains the significant difference of the old and new term tabernacles. The author
to give brief descriptions on old process to enter the tabernacle. Based on the level of priesthood, only certain ones can enter. This process reflects the obedience to the will of God concerning leaders. The priests must follow the instructions written in the Levitical law to offer the correct type of offering according to the sin. The significance of what he, meaning Jesus, accomplished versus the priesthood cannot be fully contained with a with a framework of earthly image and heavenly reality. For paradoxically, thank you for it, ladies, Christ's sacrifice was decided on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. The offering from the priest was voluntary, but the sacrifice of Jesus was required. Yeah. Paul said it best. We are to present our bodies a living sacrifice that is acceptable and holy. Yeah. Let me move on before I enter. Yeah, amen. Let's dig deeper in verses 16 through 20, which is my focal text. The writer speaks in a manner of understanding the process from a unique standpoint of a will. Or, in some of your Bibles, it may say testament. I find it very amazing due to the interchangeability of the two words, will and testament. Majority of the time, we, ref we reference it to the description of the old and the new section of the Bible. Right, right, right. A testament is an act by which a person demonstrates the disposition of his or her property after death. Sound familiar? Yeah. This written document gives instructions to the individual or individuals who has the authority to follow it. You'll get me in a second. The instructions may be simple, complicated, or complex, but the instructions must be followed according to the person the will belongs to. In this manner, it is God. If we parallel our living will inside of the will, then how much more will we possess? If we embrace the will of God against our free will or living will, then all these things shall be, all these things shall be added according to seeking God first. The will of God is more than a legal document. It is the only manuscript that gives us spiritual instructions on how to, to how on how to. Uh, it, it is the only manuscript that gives us spiritual instructions on how to distribute the ways to live according to God, step by step, or as the prophet said, line by line, precept by precept. Notice in verse 17 how the offer continues to stress the term after death. The author must understand the process after death. I don't believe the author was physically dead while writing this book. The dead man can't speak. Amen. These terms, this term describes the resurrection of Jesus. He gives instructions for what's next, which is verification is needed before application. I need to verify this. God's will is similar. Instead, you must be willing to lose your life in order to gain it. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. This is found in Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. A will slash testament is enforced only if the writer has transitioned. Christ had to die in order for the will to be accomplished. God's will is for mankind to be saved. Now let's just glance at 19 to 20 real quick. The, this bless my soul. The author details the remembrance of the old covenant. Moses sprinkled the blood and he sprinkled, he sprinkled the blood on the book and the people. Verse 20 says a declaration was made by Moses to the people. So as we read verse 20, I'm going to apply the word will instead of instead of testament to bring forth what I'm what is becoming new. This bless my soul, Pastor. Why? Because yes, there is more than enough. Yes, sir. Before I take my seat, here is my conclusion. I want to leave you with four corners, four corners of encouragement from the perspective, the will to keep going. So everyone who served in some type of form of service, I appreciate you all for your service towards this country and you may find this a blessing to your soul. In life there are trials and tribulations that had our bodies tired physically and mentally. Yep. It seems like your energy and your capabilities and your mind is pulling beyond its limits for strength. There is a reason for this, un this unexplained feeling. The United States Army Leadership Field Manual defines will as the inner drive that complies soldiers and leaders to keep going when they are exhausted, afraid, hungry, hurting, cold, and wet. At the heart of a soldier is the will to continue when it gets tough. A soldier will push beyond his or her limits, and it is only the will to continue that keeps them going. 
when a soldier is looking down the barrel of a gun, he or she must make the decision to thy will to keep moving forward in the face of death. At the heart of a at the heart of a disciple of Jesus is the will to continue to the end. This will is not based on personal self-belief or ability, but it is based on person and purpose of Christ in our lives. Jesus endured this to the end. So can we. Jesus obeyed to Jesus obedience to do thy will of the Father all the way to death. So 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 can we be, because greater works will we do. The last point I make, Peter faced this personal battle of thy will in Mark 8, verses 34. Jesus taught what a disciple must do. He must deny himself as the focus and authority of his own life. He must take up his cross of total submission and sacrifice to thy will of God. This is an example of an internal decision for the will of God. For God I live, for God I die. Thank you all. Amen.